the sharp or s orbital, where the angular momentum quantum number L was zero, a spherically shaped electron cloud or region that the electron occupies. The principal or p orbital, angular momentum L was one, a dumbbell shaped electron cloud. The diffuse or d orbital, angular momentum was two, mostly cloverleaf shaped electron clouds, with the one assigned to the z axis having a dumbbell with a donut shape. Welcome to our seventh chemistry video describing how electrons fill orbitals and the shapes of those orbitals. We will look at the sixth row on the periodic table, cesium to radon, and introduce the f or fundamental orbitals. The sixth row in the periodic table is the first row with all four electron orbitals. On the left, cesium and barium's electrons have angular momentum L equals zero and will occupy the s or spherical shaped orbital. On the right, thallium through radon, the electrons have angular momentum L equal to 1 and will occupy the p or polar shaped orbitals. Groups 3 through 12, hafnium through mercury, the electrons will have angular momentum L equal to 2 and will occupy the d or daisy cloverleaf shaped orbitals. Our focus, the lanthanides, particularly the electrons for the elements from lanthium to lutetium will have angular momentum L equal to 3 and with a couple of exceptions fill the f orbitals in order. Recall the d shell we are filling was for the principal energy level n minus 1 or the row above, so the sixth row will be filling the 5d orbitals. There is a similar shift only of two rows for filling f orbitals, so lanthanum through lutetium's electrons are filling n minus 2 or in this case n equals 4, so we'll be filling the 4f orbitals. With an idea of how the orbitals are filled, let's look at the orbital shapes with the angular momentum L equals to 3, the fundamental or f orbitals. The first f orbital, we let the magnetic quantum number m equal to 0. By convention, we call this 4fz cubed. Similar to the 3dz squared, this is an elongated polar shape, but with two lobes in the torus or the donut around the middle. For magnetic quantum number m plus or minus 1, we have a familiar looking d-shaped cloverleaf pattern, but now we have six lobes instead of four. m plus 1, we see the lobes in the xz plane. We call this 4fxz squared. m minus 1 is in the yz plane. We call this 4fyz squared. Magnetic quantum number m equals plus or minus 2, we have eight lobes. m plus 2 has lobes in the xz and the yz planes. We label this 4fz x squared minus y squared. m minus 2 is the same, just rotated 45 degrees around z. We call this 4fxyz. With angular momentum quantum number l equal to 3, the magnetic quantum number can be plus or minus 3. So for plus or minus 3, we have 6 lobes. m plus 3 has 6 lobes with one set aligned in the x-axis. 4fx, x squared minus 3y squared. m minus 3 has lobes aligned in the y-axis. 4fy, 3x squared minus y squared. And here's what they look like when they're all together. Lanthanum's electron first occupies a d orbital for the principal energy level one row above, so it's 5d1. Remember our German physicist friend Friedrich Hund? One similar spin electron goes into all of the orbitals before an electron with opposite spin goes into any orbital. So for cerium, the first electron in the 4f orbital, 4f1. Praseodymium, the second electron in the f orbital, 4f2. However, at this energy level, the electron for lanthanum moves into 4f3. Next, neodymium, 4f4. Remember our order of filling individual orbitals is random. Promethium, 4f5. Still, one similarly spin electron in each orbital first. Samarium, 4f6. Let's put this in the 4fxyz orbital. Europrium, 4f7. And here are the seven f orbitals. The 4f subshell, one electron in each of the seven different orbitals. Hopefully, you've seen enough previous videos to know as we discuss the next seven elements, we can now double up on electrons. Gadolinium, unfortunately an exception, this electron will backfill the 5d1 orbital and not occupy an f orbital to maximize spin. However, next is terbium. This goes into the 4f8 orbital. 
Then, gadolinium, the electron moves from the 5d orbital into 4f9. Dysprosium, my friend Alan's favorite, is 4f10. Holmium, 4f11. Erbium, 4f12. Tholium, 4f13. Ytterbium, 4f14. And the seven orbitals now have 14 electrons. And remember, we're filling the principal energy level n equals 4, so now the fourth shell is full. Lutetium. This final lanthanide element will backfill the 5d1 orbital. Hopefully, now you have a basic idea of how the f orbitals are shaped, how they are filled, and where they are on the periodic table, the lanthanide and actinide series. And as mentioned, the 6s shell is filled, followed by the 4f and then the 5d orbitals. Usually, introductory courses focus on the sharp principal and diffuse orbitals, with just an introduction to the fundamental orbitals. So, we may do a wrap-up video reinforcing these orbitals, or move on to the probability distribution for electrons, or where in the cloud they'll be found. If you have a video request that might help out, let me know in the comments down below, and whichever way we go, we hope to see you in that video, and if you like these videos, please give them a thumbs up or a comment down below and help the channel grow by telling a friend or becoming a subscriber.